Hi, it's uh, first week of April, it's uh, just snowing a little bit outside. Um, I'm going to make the first now of a few videos, maybe three, maybe four or five, uh, in which I'm going to look at pests and diseases in the orchard because I keep getting asked about this. Now I have said before that I didn't want to talk about the subject very much for several reasons. One, it's controversial uh, and I don't, like, I, I, I don't like controversy on this channel. I try to uh, avoid it uh, where possible, uh, where, where, although you know, everyone's willing to, free to, everyone's free to express an opinion, sure. Um, and also because there's a lot of laws and rules around it and because uh, I'm, not, I'm not qualified uh, or authorized to give people advice. And uh, it's a very officious country that we live in, and uh, you know people have been have got into trouble for things that have said on YouTube before now. Uh, so anyway, I just, want, I just want to do a bit of an introduction. Now, uh, this is going to be just general, a bit of general purpose stuff. Um, now, if this was a perfect world, uh, we wouldn't have pests and diseases, but it's not a perfect world, and we do. This is a book called The Fruit Expert. Um, DG has saying um, he's written. All, well, there are lots of books in this subject. Well, you, you'll see this. Uh, there are lots of books in this style. You'll find them around um, the garden centres. This is when uh, spraying is recommended. This chap recommends, um, uh, you know, hit at bud burst. This is a combined insecticide and, and drungicide. Hit again at green cluster. Hit again at pink blood just before the blossoms out. Don't spray during blossom, and then hit three times more. Difference. I'm not. I'm not going to go through this in detail. Uh, insecticide basically kills insects, fungicide kills or prevents fungus, and herbicide uh, is a weed killer. They're all three, they're all classed as pesticides. These are some of the pests and the diseases. You get bacterial canker, which kills our plums. Where a lot of plum trees have been killed stone dead by bacterial canker. Um, very difficult uh, to control. Uh, capsid bugs, various things, various worms and moths. Caterpillars can be a real nuisance. We've seen trees stripped bare by caterpillars. The apple twig cutter, which does what it says on the label. Various weevils. The leopard moth. I've just had to cut a very big branch out of about a third of the tree out of a mature tree because a, a leopard moth had burrowed into it and um, caused um, uh, extreme damage. Frost can be troublesome, not a lot you can do with that. The leaf midge, various leaf roll images we've had more of lately. Um, the woolly aphid, last year we had an absolutely terrible year with woolly aphid. And some of the trees I uh, put videos I were pruning are very badly affected. We've got the red spider mite, we had a plague of these three years ago. Absolute plague. There are various different sorts of aphids, they can cause a lot of trouble, mildew. Scab is one of what I call the 100 percenters. Um, scab can destroy 100% of your crop, or at least render 100% of your crop unsaleable. So faced with all of this, what does the grower do? Well, the grower takes stock and has a think about it and makes a plan and takes appropriate action. Uh, <clears throat> this is just an introduction, I'm going to give you a bit more detail later. But this is the oldest apple book I've got. I've got a few older ones in fact, simile. Um, but this is the oldest I have uh, in, the real, in the real world, as it were. Fruit Farming for Profit by George Bunyard. I just want to give you an idea. I bought this book. It's when I used to live uh, at that address. So I bought this. That's in a bookshop at Salisbury, 1986. You don't see books like this very much anymore. Um, revised to AD 1907. So this book first came out... Um, in the late, 19, late, late 1880s. Mainstream book, absolutely mainstream book. The vineyards were very well known. So I'll take a look at uh, the chapter here. Insects and blights affecting fruit trees. American blight, woolly aphis, apple sucker, spraying with quassia soft soap, McDonald, McDougall's wash, da da dum, de dum. The apple moth, um, the maggot. Aphis, sea green fly, black fly, big bud in black currants, blah, black scab and black rot fungus. Bordeaux mixture, copper sulfate, lime and water. That's how they use it. I'm not, I'm not going into any detail here, just, I'm just um, going through some of the principles here. Canker, uh, the codlin moth, blue tits and poultry will do much good service by devouring the larvae. And this is, uh, this takes us to our first principle of control. I'll talk about control later, really. I'm just here talking about the problem. Codlin moth, 
mentioned, you know, put old sackings, let them creep in and burn that off. Uh, lots of things like that you can do. Gooseberry, caterpillar, the goat moth, green fly, mildew, moss on fruit trees. That could get me got rid of in winter by unslate lime and soot. <laughs> and mulching. It's a great book, this, um, uh, etc. I know lots of stuff here. Rabbits and hares, what I used to say can be. Just flicking through to the back here. Um, where you've got some adverts in the back of the book. Um, here we are, spraying machines of all kinds for hops, fruit trees, bush fruit. Let's remember this is this book was printed 106 years ago. I'm holding something 106 years old in my hand. Nobody who was an adult then is alive today. Um, hand spraying hand power spray of various stuff Campbell's patent sulfur vaporizer the point of me showing you this is to demonstrate that if you want to go back to a golden age when there wasn't any um, pesticide application you've got to go back a long way uh, we're looking at what was standard practice here 110 120 years ago Nicotine, its advantages are certain death to all insect pests. <laughs> it is the cheapest insecticide known. Of course it's illegal now to use it. Various other stuff. Spimo, non-poisonous fruit to rewash. And here we are, Eclair knapsack sprayers. Uh, this is the kind of um, device that is probably most practical for the person with a small orchard. Of course, most of the big orchards now, most orchards are big, managed on an industrial scale with big sort of vaporizer things. I, I wonder about getting one of them. I saw one second hand for £19,000. Uh, sort of got it plus to bought one of those, plus a tractor big enough to pull it. Um, you know, would have cost me uh, as much money as we gross in the orchard in five or six years. So, you know, it, it's not going to happen. Um, this sort of thing you can buy quite readily. Uh, of course, you, you've got to get, um, you've got to be legal to use. Anyway, so that's just a little overview of some of the stuff. I didn't go into any detail there really. Some of the books I've got uh, up until the middle of the 20th century they were using a uh, sweet lot of stuff called lead arsenate which is what it sounds like. It's a, a mixture of lead, uh, obviously a, salt, a soluble salt of lead and arsenic and this was being routinely applied to apple trees certainly in the 1940s. Uh, it was replaced by DDT. Interestingly DDT is actually harmless to humans. I'm not saying that you know you can you know, you, you couldn't possibly cause any harm, but but people certainly need to make a point of swallowed spoonfuls of the stuff. Um, anyway, I'll say a bit more about some of the chemicals later. Uh, but just an overview. When we started uh, growing apples uh, and plums, we added some pears later in 1992, winter of 92, 93. We thought we'd be good and not use any um, and not use any any sprays. Uh, after three years, we realised that the trees were dying because of the competition with grass that we weren't able to control because of um, pests and diseases, mainly scab, caterpillar, and codling moth. And we started spraying. And if we hadn't, then you wouldn't be watching this video because uh, we'd have given up and sold the land. Uh, because that's, that's, that's how bad the problems were. Anyway, uh, if anyone's got anything to say, please be feel free. I'm not going to diss anybody or block or bar anybody for, you know, if they want to say, you know, you evil person, you should rely on homeopathy and companion planting. Haven't you thought of singing to the trees and etc, etc. Uh, you know, oh, please, please feel free. You know, if you say anything exceptionally stupid, I might respond to it in an appropriate manner. Um, but no, I'm sure most people who watch, you know, who come here are much more sensible and well mannered than, than than that. It's just I know people can get very upset about this. And I'll, I'll add a few more details later. Anyone got anything to say? Anyone's got any links to post? Uh, anything helpful to contribute? Then you know, please go for it. And uh, I'll um, I'll say a bit more about uh, pesticide application. Um, but I will say this now, and I will continue to say it. Uh, these substances are potentially hazardous, and they are 
very heavily regulated. If you are going to use any pesticides, there is a process that you must follow. And um, it's your responsibility to discover what that process is uh, and to follow it meticulously and to provide evidence uh, that you may be able to produce at a later date that you have followed it pro uh, uh, properly. Uh, basically, you need to do an assessment to establish that there is a need. You need to use the safest pesticide possible. You need to use the least amount possible. Uh, you must not spray when there is a wind or rain. You must not spray near water courses. You must store the stuff safely and carefully. And um, you must uh, uh, use protective equipment if necessary. And all of this other stuff. And even that may not be enough, but you've got to do all of that. And you, you are responsible to obey the law. Where you live, uh, Julia and I have both done um, two-day courses and we've passed examinations and we've got certificates. Uh, I'm not saying everyone everywhere will need to do that, but we keep the law and um, we prove that we keep the law, we document it uh, and everybody else should uh, as well.